Hi, this is a book that I'm reading. Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino. Okay, this book, I wasn't really like gonna read this. I was really going to read before we were strangers first, but apparently, I don't know, the first paragraph of this book captured me. I mean, is that the right term? Yeah. What happened? My device restarted. Okay, there. Um, and this is a story of a girl, and she's a writer. Uh, she is not really doing some any like writing, publishing at the moment. She's doing teaching because for some reason she can't find like a good plot or novel to write about. And her the people around her, her boyfriend, her um, like a colleague, <clears throat> also tells her to like, hey, maybe you should write about things that you know. Because she was writing like science fiction stuff. And it was so obvious to her beta readers that, beta readers being the, the boyfriend and the colleague, that she is not, she doesn't know what she's writing about. So it's either she is not doing enough research or her heart is not in it, okay? And then she's like, come on guys, just give me a chance here. And they just keep on giving her that advice like, hey, maybe you should write about your life, okay? Write about something based on your life. Something that you know, an experience that you have you know, experience, experience you have experienced, something that you went through, write about that. And then she's like, hell no, I am not going to write about my childhood. That's not going to happen. And then anyway, her colleague was like so engrossed with this one book that she's reading. And then after she reads the book, she's like, you got to read this. It is so good. I love this book. And it's by this new author called Jay Colby. And he is such a good writer. Like I stalked him online. He's such a cute guy. And I can't believe he's such a good writer too. Blah, blah, blah. This is his debut novel. Go ahead and read it. And then she was having like a depressed moment because, you know, she can't really find something to actually write about. And her boyfriend is being honest with her. Like this is not coming across as genuine writing. So she's pissed off about that. And I kind of not like the relationship that she has with her boyfriend. Like they've known each other for seven years, but I don't know, they are so cold towards each other. Okay, and then she reads a book and then she was like angry. She was shaking by the end of the first chapter because she realized that this book that she's reading is about her life. And she is sure that the author of this book was her childhood friend who disappeared years ago. And she's pissed off because hey he has published this wonderful promising debut novel and it's based on my life and it is told in my perspective and where the hell has he been all this time so those are the the things that she wants to say to this guy but I am um, in the book she is still in the process of recounting what's happening I mean not recounting she's not recounting she's reading the book so Basically, this story has two stories in it. So the present timeline is told in the perspective of the girl. Well, actually, also the past perspective is also in the POV of the girl. But it is written by, supposedly, by the guy who she is probably, like, you know, they were probably childhood friends slash lovers. And something just happened, and I don't know yet what tore them apart. Okay, at first, I was, like, struggling. Like, the first, like, I don't know, 5% because the writing is so amateur <laughs> I mean not amateur okay I can't even write so I can't even but it does feel like a little bit mediocre because it's it's not too deep but I, I think I finally understand how I can enjoy romance books because when I got to the 20% part and I was already I've already known the characters like I could get past the introduction wherein uh, I don't know these people and I don't care about them yeah, so there was that feeling at first, but then eventually as the story was going on, I was feeling more and more invested and now I am around 21%, yes, 21% and I read that in one sitting. So, so <laughs> dude, this author guy who wrote her story, he also used like very similar names. Like her name is Emmeline, I think that is how you pronounce it, and then in the book her name is Emerson. Although Emerson is a guy's name usually, right? And then in the book, the, the guy's name is Jackson. But in real life, his name is Jason. So, I don't know what's going to happen. What's going to happen with an existing boyfriend? Is she going to stay with him? Or is she going to meet with this author guy? Will they rekindle their love? Or will they break up? I don't know. What is Renee Carlino's thing? Like her signature signature move <laughs> like if Abby Jimenez does really good banter with like very deep um, psychological hard-hitting themes 
yeah. I don't know what her signature is. Um, okay. Oh, and I decorated this with a 1989 collage. Okay, I'm gonna stop now. Okay, you know what? I am so sick of the relationship between the main girl and her boyfriend. Like, why don't you just break up? Because that proposal was embarrassing and I don't know, it's just really pissing me off because this boyfriend is such a flat character that I feel like it's not convincing and when it's not convincing it just really takes me out of the story because I keep on thinking like this is not this is not feeling like it's right you know yeah so I'm actually past the 50% mark I'm like I don't know 60 61% whatever and uh oh you okay and then yeah so there we go 61% through Obviously, we expect that she is going to meet with the guy because, you know, she needs to confront him about why the hell did he write the story about her and what's pissing her off mo mostly. Like, this is the biggest pissing point. <laughs> pissing point. Is that he changed the story. He made it look like it was her fault. So, Emmy's fault that they broke up and yeah. When in fact it was actually Jason who really did broke up with her. But he was all like, when she confronted him at the signing, he was like, this is fiction, bro. And he was so nonchalant, which pisses off our main character. So, swear on this life, I think this is the second book of Renee Carlino. I don't know, I'm very interested in the premise of Before We Were Strangers. So I, I guess I'll give her another try, but so far this book is like smelling like a 3.5 stars for me. Yes. Okay, so I gotta wrap up Swear on This Life by Renee Carlino. Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the thing. Okay, the story was okay. And I think I would have appreciated this more if the execution was better. Or maybe if the writing is better. And if you're wondering why I have a blender up here. Well, there's that. Okay, so anyway, I don't even, like, I had some comments. Let me check my annotations. Okay, so here are my notes. Mainly, the thing that I found so unrealistic is she seems to have a very bad relationship with her current boyfriend, but at the same time, she's having a hard time letting go. But it's not, it wasn't executed in a way that it feels like I feel bad for their relationship to end. Like, I think it would have been better if I was torn between the current boyfriend and the old boyfriend like I was in One True Loves by Taylor Jenkins Reid. You know that feeling where you kind of want her to end up with one guy but also feel bad for the other guy. But for this one, like I didn't care about the existing boyfriend because they had done nothing but be shitty with each other. And the only thing that I know about this guy is that he was good when they were fresh. And he still, I mean, she still loves him because he, he's been loyal. But like imagine taking your girlfriend kayaking and then making her row because your hand was bad i mean your arm was broken i mean not really broken but it wasn't feeling well i mean yeah the arm wasn't you, you know what i mean right and then our main character's like you're it was your idea to go kayak kayaking and then he was like i just want you to get out of the get out of, get out of the house and like you know i cannot i cannot with that okay and so it wasn't really that surprising what happened towards the end between her and the boyfriend, the current boyfriend, right? And it was just like some kind of Hail Mary at the end, which also the main character has acknowledged that that kind of thing that happened with the boyfriend is sort of like a quick escape. But she didn't do the quick escape and instead she, she dealt with it properly, okay? <laughs> There was this one quote, the, 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 the girl said, How could I have known that all along and still have stayed with him? So she's talking about the, the, the current boyfriend. And I was like, you're dumb. <laughs> okay, yeah, so I was right when I said it was a story within a story. And apparently within another story. Because she wasn't keen on finishing this, the book. But eventually she did. And 
yeah, essentially what happened to the book at the end is like something that will make her think about what she's gonna do about her current situation. So it was really, literally, a book written for her because the dedication was at the back of the book for some reason and not at the start. So that's kind of strange. Um, but anyway, yeah, what else did I say? Oh, and the resolution she had with her parents. So her mother who left and her father who like was alcoholic and beat her up. So that's pretty ugly, you know, but she found her father and he was sober and then they were like crying it was also unconvincing to me and she was like i'm ready to forgive you like what okay no it just happened it just happened no development towards that and then also with the mother she was still alive she her, she found out from her dad that the mother was still alive but then the mother was still like the same kind of person and then she goes on about oh yeah i remember now mother was nothing but a cold woman emotionless blah 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 and that wasn't apparent to during the the childhood story, uh, storytelling because like you were so upset that your mother left why were you so upset? Maybe you were so upset because you were left behind with your dad, but there was there were no talks about, hey, you know what? It's better if I was it's better that I'm with dad right now and not with my mother who was so like she left you. Okay? She actually thought about that as well. Like my mother couldn't that be much of a great mother because she left her daughter here. But then when she met up with the mother, then she remembers the mother was cold i don't know it just felt like such an easy escape a, a quick like solution to the problem like you know wrapping everything in ribbons and neat ribbons anything else okay yeah i think that's that's all so now i am torn whether i would be giving before we were strangers a go because of the thing that happened here obviously but I think I will okay I'll give Miss Renee Carlino another chance yeah so that is all for Swear on This Life